Ricky, 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 Ricky. Welcome to a spanking new, brand spanking fresh, hot out of the oven episode of A Mark's Two Cents, another wrestling podcast where another sweaty nerd offers another series of unwarranted opinions on choreographed oil hugging. We're fresh off the heels of payback, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what? I was actually pleasantly surprised with this pay-per-view. I did not expect to really uh, be that invested in it. But hey, it was actually kind of a fun show. Um, I guess we can just jump right into this bitch. Um, if you're um, if you're new to the show, two, uh, so there's some quick rules I gotta cover. Um, there's three very important rules about... Um, about being a listener of this show. First of all, support Black Lives Matter. Second of all, we're going to stay caffeinated all the time. I'm going to take a little sip of my coffee and probably burn my fucking taste buds off my tongue. Okay, not too bad. Um, And the third rule, because we want clear skin and just overall better health, we're going to get hydrated. So I'm going to take a big ass sip of water It's only 6.48 in the morning So I'm going to need coffee and water Excessively Okay Wonderful Now You know Part of the reason I wasn't super excited for this pay-per-view it's because it's only a week after SummerSlam. And apparently, there was supposed to be an all-women's pay-per-view instead of Payback. And I would have much preferred that. But again, this show was honestly a pleasant little surprise. It was a nice little, uh, nice little niblet in, the, in a world full of, um, you know, overexposure. Because wrestling is so, uh, expansive. And WWE loves to just run their fan base into the fucking ground. (laughs) And run anything into the fucking ground. It's kind of surprising that I didn't feel burnt out by the end of the week. Um, So yeah, Uh, I don't... I guess let's just, just get right into this. Bobby Lashley is now the US champion. He beat Apollo Crews in the opening match. Whoopty fucking do. Uh, three out of ten. Don't give a shit. Um, put the title on MVP or else I don't give a fuck. Next up, Keith Lee was backstage preparing for his match with Randall Keith Orton. And then JBL walked in. John Bradshaw Layfield, Mr. Wall Street, Mr. Bully, Mr. Um, golfer walks in. And he, you know, he's putting Lee over, you know, he's like... You got a lot of you got a lot of potential, kid. You can you can go far in these business. And he hands Keith Lee like this, uh, some sort of like um, I pardon me if token is the wrong word, but some sort of little paper. And he's like, calls calls a million to get into this kind of club. And Keith Lee's like, I don't have that kind of money, sir. And <laughs> and then. And then uh, Bradshaw says, well, if you win tonight, then you might just be on your way. And if you lose tonight, don't feel bad. Because Randy Orton is one of the greatest ever. So, I mean, that was interesting. I don't know if they're going to do anything else with JBL and Keith Lee. I don't really think Keith Lee needs a mouthpiece or a manager. He's got enough charisma on his own. So I'm not really too sure what the point of that was. Keith Lee also doesn't strike me as the type to fucking, you know, be, wow, a million dollars? <laughs> you know, he's an ultra baby face. Why the fuck would he care about money, right? Anyways, moving on. Uh, Big E continues his singles push. Uh, he goes against Sheamus. It was actually a pretty decent match. I liked this a lot, actually. Um, I mean, it was kind of like a, it was a, it was a, it was, this isn't an insult to the match, but I'd probably say it was just an above average SmackDown match. Wasn't crazy, but you know, still kind of enjoyable. Um, Sheamus 
showing his uh wrestling chops, his grappling, uh, by working the by working Big E's leg for most of the match. Um, eventually, uh, Big E mounts a comeback and breaks out of a heel hook, which looked really fucking pain. I mean, every move that Sheamus locked in looked fucking painful, actually. Um, and you know, there's some stiff ass knees from Sheamus, but you know what, Big E didn't stay down. He was not going to quit. He was not. He's not going to back out because he's got a very wide back and he's got a very large butt. So there's no way that he's staying down. You see the legs on that guy? You see the girth on that man? I just know he's he's packing heat. Looks like an alpha male. I love Big E. He's great. Um, and uh, moving on from Big E's... <laughs> by, from moving on from Big E's penis. I'm sorry, it's way too early to be talking about this. Um... Yeah, a bro kick countered into a power bomb. I love that spot. That was impressive as shit. Sheamus is not a small dude either. So to just like pick that motherfucker up on your shoulders and power bomb him, Jesus Christ. That that um power bomb and then right into a big ending. One, two, three. Mr. Langston picks up the victory, I gotta say. It's about a five out of ten. Five out of ten, like I said, an above average SmackDown match is pretty good. I liked it a lot. Um there was something kind of scientific about Sheamus in this match, and I uh, honestly enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> this next match, King Corbin versus Matt Riddle. Um, there was a there was a pre match interview where um, the interview bot, who I actually don't recognize, she was very pretty though. Um, she introduced him as the bodacious barefoot bro, and I've heard a lot of people pick this apart and I'm not gonna lie I laughed at it I thought it was kind of funny I mean it's not like Matt Riddle talks like that but <laughs> but I mean, it was clearly a fucking line that was fed to this poor interview bot by Vince but I thought it was kind of funny sort of fitting you know but I mean, it, I mean, it's not as bad as what Michael Cole was using to put Keith Lee over during that little um, space of silence before the JBL walked into his dressing room. He was like the effervescent Keith Lee with a great smile, and like <laughs> he literally said that Keith Lee has a great smile. Why the fuck does that matter in pro wrestling? Why the fuck would that matter? Really? Come on, come on, dude. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Anyways, Matt Riddle is, you know, basically just like, yo, bro, I'm not even sweating King Corbin, dude. I'm gonna fucking beat him, and we're gonna drink some White Claws after. He didn't say that, but, um, the interview bot apparently brings up a tweet from King Corbin that said he's going to prove that Matt Riddle is not just a failure at home, but a failure in the ring. I mean, that's a uh, pretty ballsy and um, downright inappropriate <laughs> to to um, bring up his infidelity scandal because we're talking about a rape victim. If Matt is indeed guilty of these allegations, so um, yeah, that was not cool. Not cool at all. Not cool, bro. The match itself was whatever. Um, Corbin, I think Corbin got a little too much offense. And, you know, he ambushed Matt Riddle uh, during his uh, flip-flop removal during his entrance. Just, you know, beating the shit out of him. Whatever. Matt eventually works uh, some kicks and forearms back into Corbin. Has a sleeper hold in for a while. Um... Side slam, two count, and just like Big E and his massive legs and his massive girthy, just like Big E, Matt Riddle won't stay down, and he kicks out of a deep six, whatever, bro to sleep, and the floating bro for the win, uh, and I was actually pretty um, surprised that, that Corbin didn't cheat to win or anything, that was a... Uh, Shocking. 
yeah, that was I was really pleasantly surprised. Again, that's kind of a running theme in this show. Oh, that's a pleasant surprise. Look at that. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Five out of ten. <laughs> and there's a post-match interview where Matt is, uh, like, yelling to himself. Like, oh, I'm so happy to beat Baron Corbin, bro. And then the po- and then um the inter- an interviewer comes up and it asks him, what's it like to be rid of Baron Corbin? And he's like, listen, bro, it feels so... And then, like, before he... It was actually really fucking funny. The timing was perfect. As he's saying this, Baron runs backstage and just starts clobbering the piss out of him. That was pretty great. That was funny. I actually enjoyed that little <laughs> moment more than the match. I'm not going to lie. Um, So, yeah, it... <sighs> Despite the laugh, it does suck because that means we're going to get more Baron Corbin versus Matt Riddle. Matt, you're great. You're a good wrestler, but man, just come on. Like how, you could have you could have had him walk out with the IC title. You could have had him beat AJ in that debut match. I dead ass thought it was for the IC title. Like did they just change plans last minute cuz I can't remember. I could have sworn it was supposed to be for the title. Whatever. Um, another, uh, the women's tag team championships were on the line in this next match. Sasha and Bailey. Um, Bailey still holding on to her SmackDown women's title. Sasha only one belt. She's not uh, two, two belt banks anymore. Um, defending against Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. <sighs> you know, the finish was obvious considering that um the tension between Sasha and Bailey is now kicking kicking into higher gear but at the same time I actually like this match a lot what did I just say pleasant surprise pleasant surprise yeah it was actually a pretty good fucking match you get some three amigos action from Sasha that never gets old because you know Eddie Guerrero inspired me um there was a really awkward botched double team move on Shayna and I almost thought that was on purpose because because of their drama together I honestly thought that was on purpose but it wasn't as far as I can tell um one really fucking funny spot was when Naya caught Sasha um and just started slamming her back and forth to each side of her on the barricade that's pretty awesome it looks like that takes a lot of core strength for Sasha to maintain that position too like holy shit Sasha, I've seen her work out though, she's a beast Anyways, um Back in the ring Uh, she gets, uh She catches Bailey, beals her around the ring A little bit, big splash in the corner And an elbow drop Naya's on fire Naya's on fire Um, sorry I had to repeat it Because I saw the opportunity to rhyme I apologize Um Uh, in the corner Bailey elbows Shayna Baszler in the face Which provokes her to get in the ring and the referee's distracted he's like hey Shayna Shayna this is not a tag team tornado match you have to stay in your corner until you're tagged in and make sure you're holding that fucking tag rope or else it's not a legal tag Shayna Baszler doesn't give a fuck she's an MMA fighter (laughs) so she gets in the ring and she's like bitch and uh, he's distracted so while he's distracted Bailey's about to get fucked by fucked up. Excuse me. Oh my god. She's about to get fucked up by uh, Nia Jax and Sasha clips the knee of Nia. She goes down. Uh, Bailey starts working the knee a little bit too. They're tagging in and out, working Nia, double teaming her a little bit. Um, eventually, <sighs> excuse me. Nia picks up um, Sasha for a Samoan drop, and then. Fl- <laughs> Clips uh, Bailey in the face with Sasha's boots, and then hits a Samoan drop on Sasha. Tags in Shayna. Uh, Shayna fucking comes in with that. If I wish there was an actual crowd there, cause that hot tag was fucking sick. She just comes. She waltzes right in that bitch, striking knees, punches. You know, fuck. Oh my god, dude. She was beating the shit out of uh, Sasha and Bailey. It was great. Um, a bunch of sliding. The sliding, um, uh, the sliding knees, like the little baseball slide knees, fucking A plus. Um, 
And she hits a bunch, a uh, couple gut re- gut wrench suplexes to the girls. Um, Naya kicks out of a frog splash and a knee from Sasha. And at this point, they're getting super frustrated because they're like, "What the fuck?" Um, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, they're like, "What do we? What do we have to do to put these away? To put these two women away? Oh my god, are they gonna win? They can't stand each other. We're best friends." Um, and when Shayna gets tagged back in, Nia gets backdropped by. It actually looked like it hurt like a motherfucker. Because, like, Bailey and Sasha, I mean, I'm, I assume they're very strong, but, like, at the same time, it's Nia Jax. I don't know how much Nia weighs, but I imagine it's probably not easy to backdrop anyone who's significantly larger than you. That should look like it hurt. I hope Nia's okay, honestly. Um, and this fucking finish, this fucking finish, dude. Man, Shayna. <laughs> Shayna fucking puts Sasha in a Muda lock, working her legs, and then fucking locks Bailey into a Karabuda clutch. Oh my god! And then and then she she has both of them in a submission hold, two different submission holds at the same fucking time. And then she grabs Sasha's arm to get more like torque on the Karabuda clutch on Bailey. And bam, you got new women's tag team champions, bro. This was fucking that was that finish was fire. That finish was fucking great. That's exactly how I want Shayna to be displayed, or excuse me, presented. Displayed sounds like a Best Buy, Best Buy um, thing. But yeah, shout out to Shayna. Shout out to Naya. Cannot wait to see where they go with this tag team title reign. To be to be honest though, as I said a couple minutes ago, this finish was really predictable. Um, it's like okay, yeah, Sasha and Bailey are gonna lose the titles. Um, I had a little 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 bit of a feeling that they were gonna keep the titles and maybe drop it to another team, considering um, Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan are back together as a team. But hey, I'm not mad about it. But that just means we'll probably get the Riot Squad versus Naya and Shayna. So that's cool. Um, post-match, Sasha is looking very frustrated at Bailey, Just mean mugging the shit out of her. I cannot wait for this singles match. It's going to be fucking awesome. And I, and I, you know, for the main roster, this is a damn good build-up to this match. It's a damn good build-up. Uh, six out of ten. Up up next, we got the thick boy, the thickest boy in all the land, Keith Lee, going against Randall Keith Orton. And uh, for whatever reason, Keith Lee, his his entrance gear, his like hood, the 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 sleeveless hoodie thing he was wearing, looked like he looked like. If y'all ever watched Ben Ten, as a kid, one of his aliens was called Upgrade. And it was an alien that, like, used to, like, merge with technology and, like, upgrade it. Yeah, he looked like Upgrade from Ben 10, and it was really weird. Not sure what the fucking point of that was. But, but hey, Keith Lee still looks pretty badass in a silly, in silly gear like that. Hold on, let me take a sip of coffee. In the most unsurprising fashion, this match started off with a headlock. <laughs> From you know, because you know, Randy loves his headlocks. Um, Keith hits a he, Keith uh, works his way out of it, and then uh, there's a there's a stiff shoulder tackle. Randy doesn't go down, but he's like he buckles a little bit, and it was great. They hits the rope again, and uh, Keith hits just. Hits a hits Orton with a crossbody mid stride, which was fucking awesome. It was, it was so cool. It was I don't man, Keith just watching Keith Lee move around, dude. Incredible. I love this guy. Orton rolls out of the ring, um, and when he comes back, he's like, "I am Randy Orton. I am the greatest wrestler ever, and I demand your respect." And he hits like this gunshot 
knife edge chop on Keith, and he just no sells it. Another chop, no sells it. Another chop, no sells it. Keith whips Randy into the corner and hits that fucking um. It, it's it's it, there's a name for it, Grizzly something. I'm just gonna call it the du- the double palm strike. But yeah, he does that thing where he'll like kind of grizzly paw with the chop. Anyway, bam! Right into right into the chest of Orton. Um, that was fucking awesome. I love that. Eventually, um, well, soon after, Orton slams Keith Lee's shoulder into the ring post and then does that back suplex onto the ring, uh, onto the announce desk. Um, but then Keith mounts some momentum, sends Randy his receipt, which was pretty awesome. He hits uh, Orton with his own little back suplex onto the announce desk. That was hilarious. Um, uh, draping DDT from Orton. Looking a little bleak for uh, Keith Lee. Everyone's like, "Oh my God, is he is he gonna lose his first match?" Um, well, second match. Pardon me, his first pay per view match. He starts winding up for the RKO, and as he jumps into the RKO, Keith f- picks him up onto his shoulders. This tall motherfucker, Randy Orton, counters the RKO. He counters the RKO. And hits Orton with a spirit bomb. Almost drives him through the fucking ring. Orton bounces off the mat. One, two, three. Clean as a whistle. Keith Lee beats um, <clears throat> Randy Orton. That was fucking great. That for I mean, even though it was a short match, it was still very enjoyable. Um, I am especially excited that Keith Lee won clean. There was no interference. Nothing happened with Retribution. Uh, Drew McIntyre is still, you know, quote unquote, recovering from his severe concussions, from Randy punting his head off on Raw. Uh, yeah, shout out to Keith Lee, man. I can't wait to see um, where he where he where he goes. Something tells me that uh, they're high on him, and uh, man, whew, just bring that old theme song back, and you're set. Like, just let him strap this guy with the jetpack and send him to the fucking moon because you got yourself a superstar in Keith Lee uh, backstage Paul Heyman is walking around uh, this is actually the second Paul Heyman segment I just forgot to mention the first one um, Kayla Braxton is asking um, Paul if Roman had signed the contract for the triple threat match tonight for the universal title and um <laughs> The first time, Heyman was really defensive about it. And he's like, wow, you couldn't have thought of a better question. Um, this time, she asks him the same thing. Is it safe to assume that Roman has signed the contract? And he says, Roman guaranteed he'd be here. And he provided not a prediction, but a spoiler that he would win back his Universal Championship. So I think, uh, I think it's safe to assume that he's here cool now um we'll get into that in a second uh the semi-main event dominic and Rey mysterio taking on seth rollins and buddy murphy this uh was pretty fun just like uh dominic versus seth at SummerSlam last week um it was god it seemed to be moving at a breakneck pace at least the ending like maybe i maybe i just tuned out on accident or, or or didn't even or just was I didn't even take notes on this match because it was hard to keep up with but in a good way um, like I said it moved at a real fast pace um, and Dominic and Ray picked up the victory Seth has a singles match with Ray Mysterio tonight so I'm assuming that's why he uh, didn't take the pin from Dominic uh, so uh, I don't I mean I feel like this was a good way to end it to be honest if not a rematch between Dominic and Seth cuz I don't know it's been a, it's been going on for a little bit I think they could uh I think they could do all of that I mean I thought it was over after Ray got his fucking eye taken out at extreme rules but whatever uh yeah uh, 6 out of 10 and then the main event triple threat 
no holds barred. For the Universal Championship, we have Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns challenging the Fiend. The only guy that makes his fucking entrance is uh, Bray Wyatt. He comes out, his usual stuff, you know. Catching flies, his usual. And, um, but as he's posing with the belt, Braun sneaks up on him, gets the jump on him, he starts beating the shit out of Bray. Um, these two just take it to each other. Shit, I mean, for fucking a good 10, 15 minutes. Uh, there's steel steps. Bray gets slammed onto the steel steps. Bray uses his giant Firefly Funhouse mallet to uh, clobber Braun a little bit. Uh, Braun uh, tackles Bray off the side of the stage. Fucking hell, it was crazy. Kind of balls to the wall. It was pretty similar to their Falls Count Anywhere match, honestly. And this whole time, Roman ain't even there. So it's like, what the fuck? Where's Roman? Well, here's the thing. Here's what happened. <laughs> um, at, near the very end, Braun climbs to the top, and Bray catches him at the top. And it's like, uh, it was painfully obvious where they were going with this. Superplex. And since they're two big dudes, you can't do a fucking superplex spot without the goddamn ring collapsing. It was so cool the first time when Brock Lesnar and Big Show did it. Why do we keep rehashing this? Because after Brock and Big Show, it was Big Show and Mark Henry. And then it was Braun and Big Show. For fuck's sake, can we just... Like, it was really cool the first two times. Let's just quit doing that now, because it's not as impactful anymore. Please. <laughs> um, and the match itself was kind of... Uh, it was a little lackluster. It was fun to watch them you know, beat the piss out of each other, but still. Um, uh, after this, they're both laid out in the ring. They can't really do much. And then fucking... Or uh, I almost said Randy Orton, excuse me. Roman Reigns comes out with Paul Heyman by his side. Paul's holding the contract and Roman has a steel chair. Uh, he's not even like in gear, he's just kind of like wearing a t-shirt, it was hilarious. He, uh, Paul flips open that little notebook, o uh, Roman signs the fucking contract and marches down to the ring. He's, he uh, immediately tries to pin the Fiend, the Fiend kicks out, um, tries to cover the Fiend again, because it worked well the first time, <laughs> the Fiend kicks out, uh, and then he, um, Tries to pin Braun after beating the shit out of him with a steel chair. Nothing. Kicks out. Um, a whole lot of nada. And then uh, he tries to take it to the Fiend with the chair. Mandible claw. And then a low blow. I didn't know that um, the Fiend could withstand falling off the side of a stage. Um, possibly getting burned alive. Um, falling onto solid concrete. Um... Uh, being beaten with a leather strap, being choked with a leather strap. Um, I didn't know he could. Uh, I didn't know he was impervious to all of this. But once you hit him in the nuts, he just kind of goes down. Didn't make a lot of fucking sense to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm tripping. But uh, I paid a little bit of attention to the continuity of the fiends' whole shtick. Uh, so he goes down. He just kind of rolls out of the ring, even though he always gets up during his matches. He always gets up, but for some reason he didn't get up this time. Roman spears Braun, one, two, three, he's the new Universal Champion. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not as upset as I could be. WWE could have taken a really shitty route with this and had Roman just come back as a baby face, right? But... I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> I'm just sad because, you know, you guys know how much I like Bray Wyatt, and I was really excited to see him with the title again. I don't, I mean, I'm now I'm just worried that Bray's going to be stuck in the mid card or the upper mid card forever now that Roman's back, you know? Um, it was, I'm, I am really excited, though, to see where this whole Paul Heyman guy, Roman, goes. Because Roman should have been heel years ago. Most people would agree. He should have been heel years ago. Um, but with a guy like Heyman by his side, 
This is, I think this is just pretty much guaranteed to be gold, right? It's pretty much guaranteed. Um, yeah, I want to see uh, who he feuds with. I, I honestly wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have minded Roman winning the title later. But at the same time, if he just doesn't win the title his first match back, it's also kind of goofy. Like, why would you even put him in the match? You know what I mean? So it makes sense, but it doesn't. I don't know. I guess uh, guess we'll see how uh, what happens. On I would honestly, I would I would keep the fiend off television for a little bit. I would keep Bray off of television for a little bit. Cause I I don't uh, I want to see the fiend versus Roman, but only if the fiend walks out victorious. Does Roman gotta have every fucking accolade? Does he got? He main evented like what four or five WrestleManias in a row. That was pretty fucking significant. <laughs> he was supposed to go over Goldberg at WrestleMania this year. Jesus Christ, like, does he need to be the first guy? To, well, the well, second, the second guy to really beat the Fiend. Like, I don't understand, man. I don't understand this. But overall, it was a pretty good show. I enjoyed it. Other than that really weird fucking finish that I'm really still not fully, I've still not fully unpacked it yet. But anyways um due to me missing out on a episode of the podcast last week i'm going to put out two uh one or two more episodes this week going on vacation this weekend so i will miss smackdown but i'll obviously try to catch up um yeah i'm not sure what exactly what these bonus episodes are going to be about uh one one of them will most likely be the book review that I was supposed to do last week, and then uh, one of them will definitely be like a dynamite review, or we'll just talk about shit going on in the week. Um, hope you guys enjoyed listening. If you're li- if you're listening to this on YouTube, check the description. We got some uh, links to charities and petitions and a uh, Black Lives Matter related ish. Support the movement, man. Just because the media doesn't cover shit doesn't mean you can't still support it. Uh, if you really care prove it um <laughs> that sounded really hostile i apologize but but no really um yeah see you guys later in the week thank you for listening peace out